rapper. One of his biggest hits is a song called God's Plan, and the music video for this song presents what is to me a bit of a parable in its own right. The video opens on a simple, silent, black screen that reads, the budget for this video was $996,631.90. We gave it all away. The rest of the video is footage of people in Miami receiving gifts from Drake. He buys groceries for families. He pays for college scholarships. He hands out a giant stack of cash to a single mom trying to make ends meet. He gets 15 passenger vans for a youth center, a donation to the fire department and a struggling local church, toys for underprivileged children, a shopping trip for homeless women, cars for people who need transportation, funding for after-school programs, and the list goes on and on. Drake said that the video is the most important thing he's ever done in his career. Some said, it was a publicity stunt, and maybe it was, but still, I can't watch it without weeping. What gets me is the idea that honor and fame don't have to be hoarded, that joy is not a limited resource. Joy expands when it is shared. The idea that a person can use their influence to bring dignity to others, to be inclusive of others, especially those you might not expect. It's that same expansion of dignity and welcome that's at the center of our parable today. Jesus is sitting in the midst of a particular group of leaders who have structured their lives around a culture of honor and shame. They're a little too worked up about who sits where and which names are on the guest list. Jesus sees their competition. They're angling for a better seat and says, no, that is not what God is like. He tells a story about a guy just like them, someone who is bought into this system of honor and reward based on social standing. The man is clearly wealthy, and he invites, as expected, his clearly wealthy friends. But something goes wrong. The system stops working for him. The invitations that he extended as a means of accruing honor and future invitations for himself are rejected. In their culture, rejection like this would mean real consequences for his future social standing and viability as a respected member of the community. So he's faced with the collapse of his entire social world, and he has a choice. The dinner is ready now. What is he going to do with it? The host sends his slave out to the town to bring in all the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. And then, when there is still room, he sends him out again to the roads and lanes to compel them to come, because what he wants most of all is for the house to be full. As we read this parable, it's tempting to look for the allegory, the easy interpretation, perhaps the one where God plays the role of the host and we play the role of the invited guests. Read this way, the message of the parable is clear. Make sure you stay on the guest list. But the trouble with this interpretation, if God is the host, is that the host doesn't actually come off looking very good. The host looks kind of like a social climbing snob who doesn't have any real friends and who only invites the people off the street as a last resort, even though Jesus just said that is who a godly person would have invited first. So we might look at it a different way. Maybe we are best represented by the host, who starts out looking for an opportunity to climb the social ladder. 
Maybe we too need to be disillusioned of our trust in the fickle social systems of our culture. Maybe we too are called to have a similar change of heart where we move from only seeing value in the people who look and think like us to seeing that actually we find God in being with people who are different from us. We find God in the poor and the oppressed. We find God when we sit at the table next to someone from a completely different experience of the world and say, isn't it amazing that God wants us both? The goal, I think, is not to see ourselves or to see God as any one character in the story. The goal is to see God in the process, the process of moving away from self-centered desires toward kingdom-centered desires, away from exclusion and toward invitation, toward acknowledging that even when it does not make sense to us, there is always more room at God's table. God wants the house to be full. Now, if this parable stood on its own, there might be more ambiguity in its meaning. But Jesus tells this story to leaders, people who have power in their community, immediately after he reprimands them for being too concerned with recognition and not nearly concerned enough about extending welcome to others. Jesus tells them, don't throw parties for the people you'd expect. Don't spend your life chasing after social capital. Throw parties for the outsiders. Spend your life chasing after the poor, the sick, the outcast. Invite them in. Use your influence to bring others in. Don't worry about the status of your own invitation. There is room in God's house for us all. Of course, this idea isn't original to Jesus. From the time of Abraham, the people of Israel have been reminded that they were wanderers and God brought them home. They were slaves and God set them free. They were lost in the desert and God made a way through. Care for the stranger, the widow, the weak, the outsider is embedded in the Jewish tradition. So Jesus isn't teaching a new idea about God. He's encouraging these leaders to live up to the call of their faith in the face of a society that does not make that easy. A while ago, I was talking with a colleague about small group ministry. His church focuses on getting as many people as possible connected in a small group, like a Bible study or a dinner group. It sounds sort of like what y'all are doing here. And I was asking him what their policies were for adding new members to a group. Are the groups open and anyone can join at any time? Is there a time at which the group becomes closed to new members? And he said that while the groups tend to settle out after the first few weeks, But the pastors ask the groups to always imagine that there is an empty chair in the room. The question that they want the groups to be constantly asking is who else can we invite? How can we use the feeling of belonging that we have in this group to welcome and give support to someone who may feel like an outsider? Who belongs? in this empty seat. Our conversation got me thinking, what if we lived our lives like that? Always imagining that there was an open seat. Always keeping an eye out for someone we could welcome in. Because we believe that that's what God is like. It's not easy to reflect God's welcome when the social systems we're part of make us feel like we have to work really hard in order to belong. It's not easy to reflect God's welcome 
when voices in our culture encourage us to exclude or ignore people who disagree with us, it's not easy to reflect God's welcome. But the thing that I love about this parable is that even though the host began his dinner preparations in accordance with the social expectations of the day, by the end of the story, the dinner has taken on a life of its own. It wasn't his initial plan to bring in people off the streets for the dinner, but the opportunity presents itself and he realizes that it's more important to get people to the dinner than to worry about their qualifications. It takes him a little while, but ultimately he hosts a beautiful feast. This is encouraging to me. I find myself so easily distracted by priorities that are not of God. Acceptance, security, success. Maybe you have others. But the promise of this story is that even when our attention is focused elsewhere, the kingdom of God finds a way to break through. It may wreak some havoc on our social systems and personal relationships. It may undermine everything we've learned about how to get ahead. But even still, the dinner is ready now. The kingdom of God is not like a party for people of influence. The kingdom of God is not even just like a party for the oppressed. The kingdom of God is like an exclusive invitation that gets turned on its head, a guest list that keeps on growing, a house that still has room, room for everyone. For me, that is what God is like. What about you? Amen.